Adam here from the Walzer Automotive Group, and what I want to do today is take you on a test drive. So next to me here is the all-new 2024 Honda Prologue. Now this is the newest EV in the Honda lineup, so we'll look at the interior, the exterior, some of the specs, and then go for a spin around, see what it's like out on the road. Okay, so we're behind the wheel of the 2024 Honda Prologue. And now this is the elite trim level. So this is gonna be the range topping model. So we've got lots of good equipment in here. So let's get it and drive and go for a spin around. Now, Honda has produced a couple of EVs in the past, but this is going to be their first EV SUV. So the Prologue was actually developed in partnership with General Motors. So I find that to be pretty interesting as I just drove the Blazer EV not too long ago. There is a lot of similarities inside. If you're familiar with the new Chevrolet lineup, the buttons in here do look similar, but there is still a hint of Honda found when you're behind the wheel. Now the Prologue EV, depending on which trim level or if you have the single or dual motor option, the range can change a little bit. Now the Elite with the 21 inch wheels does get the lowest range, but which is still pretty good at 273 miles. Now if you go down to the base trim or the front wheel drive, you can actually bump that up about another 25 miles or so. But really, I mean, I'm in the car, I've got pretty much a full charge and it's telling me I've got 256 miles of range. So it is dependent on how you're driving. Like today, Today, it's hot out so I've got the air conditioning blasting I've also got my ventilated seats going so that can change it a little bit as well now let's start with the exterior so this is the snowfall pearl color and these 21 inch wheels kind of remind me of sort of a floral pattern and it does look really cool so this is actually gonna be I think it's about eight inches longer than a CRV but it's about five inches wider inside so it almost kind of feels reminiscent of a passport to me more than actually the CRV model so while there are some pretty cool colors now for the 24 Prologue, and there's a few different wheel options, you can get kind of the blacked out trim if you want it to be a little bit sportier. So there is a lot of ways to configure these outside. Now you will find your charging port just in front of the driver's side here. So that you can open up and this is gonna have the 85 kilowatt hour battery. So like I said, with 273 miles of range, this is gonna have the dual motor in the Elite, and this is also going to be all wheel drive. So this would make for a pretty good snow vehicle. Whether you put some snow tires on here, that low center of gravity from the battery does make it pretty easy to use throughout the winter months. Although there is the trade-off obviously that it would take a little bit more battery as the cold weather does deplete it a little bit more, but charging does come pretty quickly as you can use level one, level two, or even the level three charger. So let's jump to the inside on the Elite. Immediately, like I said, you notice it does feel kind of similar to that Chevrolet lineup, but there's lots of great creature comforts in here. Like I mentioned at the top, we've got our wireless Apple CarPlay. So I've actually got my phone on the wireless charger here. So I've got my Google Maps, Spotify, all that good stuff built in right to this infotainment screen. The other thing I really like is that it's lightning fast. Some of the screens can be a little bit laggy or seem like they kind of take forever to fire up, but this one when you hop in your phone connects automatically and you're good to go now from there you can also run android auto this is actually going to have a built-in google assistant so i can say walls or honda and with the google assistant going it will actually give me directions to where i'm trying to go and not only the infotainment screen but also onto our digital gauge cluster so the digital gauge cluster is really cool i love that you can just click a little button on the steering wheel and go from kind of your standard layout you can go into Google Maps and then it will also pull up your CarPlay that's linked in here and then it kind of takes you back to your safety menu, I'll call it. So that would be your lane departure warning as well. There's an adaptive cruise control in this vehicle. There is a ton of safety. That Honda Safety Sense is one of the best ones. And the good thing is if you don't like any of that equipment, you can turn it off or kind of limit it in the display here. But really the adaptive cruise control is pretty cool. And if you haven't had it before in a vehicle, definitely is a game changer. If you're doing cabin trips or driving on the highway a lot, you set that three, two, one car length distance ahead of you, and it's gonna keep that distance on the road and make it very safe and convenient when you, maybe it's you and the family are in the vehicle, it's gonna keep an eye out maybe when you can't. But beyond that, there's also kind of a one pedal driving. So you can turn that on or off right here on the menu and what that does, so if I kick it on and I let go, immediately the vehicle slows down. You can kind of see that, okay, I'll give it a little bit of juice here and then let off. And what that's doing is it's gonna help me regen some of that battery back. So if you don't wanna use that, you can turn it off. And then right behind the steering wheel here as well, you do have a button that would control some of that as well. But overall, how's the ride and drive? 
it's comfortable. Obviously, as all EVs are, it's extremely quiet in here. It's pretty windy outside today, and I get almost no wind noise through the cabin. I was very amazed and surprised at just how quiet and comfortable it really was. But I like the EV power that you get. So with this dual motor, I think it's something like 288 horsepower. So if I put my foot down, I think you could hear my camera gear go flying in the back. It's got a lot of power. That's the cool thing about EVs is that it's instant torque. You don't have to wait for a turbocharger to spool up and get you going. It just hits right away and it is fun to drive. Now there is a sport mode as well over here you can select on the side. So if you feel like getting a little sporty using up some of that charge, you certainly can. But I mean, day-to-day -day use, well, like I said, the heated seats in here, the heated steering wheel, the ventilated seats, this one also does have the heads up display. So that would tell me my miles per hour, if I've got my cruise control settings on there. So there's lots of stuff that make it very comfortable for just buzzing around town, picking up the kids, back and forth to work. And then the charging is obviously going to help save you a lot of money in the long run. I think it's something like over a five or six year span, the estimate is about a $5,000 savings from using a gas engine. And my best estimate from what I've done, a little bit of research to try and figure out what would be maybe your average charge or full tank compared to going to the gas station. If you're currently maybe driving a SUV, say that's getting 24 or five miles per gallon, and you're switching over to an EV, that's gonna give you somewhere around a high 200 mile range. I would guess at a level two public charging network, it's somewhere between maybe 12 to $25 to fill up the EV battery. So it will, I mean, eventually save you money in the long run. Yes, the price might be more upfront, but the economic trade-off from that is that you will save a little bit at the pump, we call it. So charging time, I think it's something from like 10 to 80%, maybe about 25 to 35 minutes, depending on the charging level that you're getting or anything else. So it's not like you're sitting for two hours at a time. And obviously you can use level one, or if you have the level two charger at home, you can certainly plug it in overnight and it will get you back up to 80 to 100%. So some of the other cool safety stuff in here is you've got your camera button. So if you're stopped or you're going really slowly, you can actually press that. And this has the 360 view surround camera. And it's also going to have the parking sensors in here. So maybe you've got a really tight parking spot or a garage stall, or you're trying to see if the kids left something in the driveway. You can click that camera button or when you put it into reverse, that will pop up. And it is very convenient and nice to not back into something. And if you're not the best at parking, there also is a little button you can click here for the parking assist. So let's touch on the MSRP or the pricing. Now the base trim level would start at about 48.7 and fully loaded in the Elite with the all-wheel drive and the dual motor, you're looking closer to about 59 to 60,000. So yes, it is a lot of money, but again, if you get under that $55,000 MSRP in Minnesota, you can even qualify for possibly that up to $2,500 in EV rebates. And there is other stuff as well that you can sometimes qualify for to make it even more more affordable. So competitively or comparing maybe with a gas engine, with the EV, you're going to be kind of in the same ballpark. Yes, $59,000 I understand is a lot of money, but you are getting a lot of car here. Like I said, the wireless Apple CarPlay, the quiet ride, the comfort, all the luxury, plus up above, this one gets the full glass sunroof up above, which really opens it up, especially on the darker interior. So there is a lot of equipment in here. But like I said, maybe you're looking at the base model, you're down to about $47,000. So that, I think the average new car price in the US right now is about 48,000. So you're right on par with that. And you're still getting almost a 300 mile range, a lot of comfort as they do come with the heated seats and the car play and all that. So I think if you're shopping for an EV and you maybe have been out and you've driven a Tesla or some of the other models and you're not quite familiar, I think you absolutely owe to yourself to come out and take it for a spin. The instant power is fun. The technology and the comfort of just being a Honda is certainly still there. When I'm inside, it feels like I'm in a Honda. And I hope that makes sense because you feel like I can get in the vehicle, I know how to change the air conditioning, I know where the heated seats are, the steering wheel makes sense. There's lots of good stuff in these vehicles, and I think with the cool new styling of the Honda Prologue, it's definitely one to come out, take for a spin, and see what you think. 
So that was just a quick look and drive at the all new Honda Prologue. Now, if you have any other questions or you'd like to schedule a test drive for yourself, you can visit us online at walzer.com or stop by Walzer Honda anytime. We'd be more than happy to help. Thanks for watching.